My name is uh, Frank Pope, uh, 57 years old. I've uh, been a steel worker since 1977 when I started in the mill. See, my dad was a steel worker. You know, I'm a third generation steel worker in the family. I thought when as I grew up, you know, as I get older, I didn't know what I, I was unsure what I wanted to do. And I got out of high school and I thought to myself, you know, I don't know if I want to go in the mill yet or not. You know, I'm, I'm just a kid, you know. I want to go out and browse around and check things out, you know. So that's when I went on the road with the, you know, band and stuff. So about you know, seven or ten years later, you know, it's like it got road burnt. You know, got tired of seeing that yellow line on the road, you know. So I thought, well, this is wearing me down. You know, I want to go, go back and get a regular eight-hour day job. That's why I went in there, because there, it was a good job. You had benefits and everything. And when I came in, I think there was just a touch over 14000 And uh, here we are, here we are uh, dwindled down to, I think, somewhere around 950 people, something like that. Maybe a little lower right now, you know. I've been through every layoff. I missed one layoff in 86, the winter of 86. They bumped me uh, to another part of the mill, the sheet mill. And that's before it got shut down a few years ago. And that's the only layoff I, met, I missed. Out of that, I've been, I've been through every layoff they ever had. Let's see, one, two. At least five, maybe six. Let me put it to you this way. If I knew it was going to end up like this, no way. My dad told me before he passed away, this was like in 1990. I don't know how he's seen this. Them old timers are smart. He said to me, he goes, ah, he says, you watch. This is before everything started dwindling down. He says, I'll give it another 10, 15 years. He said, 15 at the most. It's going to be a finishing mill. I said, you don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about, finishing mill? Yeah, you watch. He says, I see the signs now. I said, signs of what? He goes, read the newspaper, watch the news. Well, back in, you're young, you don't watch the news that much. You know, you're in and out of the house, you're roaming around, you know. So I start watching the news. And I'm gradually seeing, you know, he's falling into place what he's saying. I'm the young man on the bottom again, you know, with 33 years in. You know, I'm trying to retire and I can't. You get, like, disgusted. Uh, some people get depressed. You get aggravated, it makes you mean. You know, it makes you like you don't want to go out in public, be around people because like somebody might say the wrong thing and then you'll go off on them, you know. First of all, uh, we got to get back to work, number one, okay. And uh, uh, supposedly it was supposed to be like uh, a, an attrition thing, uh, people retiring, uh, they got to a certain age, uh, you, you move up, you know, one for one, one guy for one guy, you know. You keep moving, you know, two people leave, two people come back. You know, it was like a, a, a thing like that. A person or somebody dies or gets sick, gets disabled, another person comes in, you know. It's not happening. It just isn't happening, you know. But right now, no, <laughs> I don't feel any control at all. You know, I feel like I'm just hanging out there in the left field, you know. Just uh, waiting to see what happens, you know. That's all I can do. And if I knew this was going to happen on down the road before I got in the middle, you know, because... Like I said, I wanted to follow in my dad's footsteps. I'd have never got into this. I'd have went uh, into another field somewhere. I'd have probably ended up working in one of the recording studios or something, you know, mixing as a sound mixer or something, you know.